Welcome to Straight Out of Savannah, Talking with Tammy, a podcast that showcases people you may not know who are choosing to use their gifts to inspire and move the planet. Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. I am super excited to have my guest, Brian Dahl Wood, joining me here to talk about the pilot of her new show. And it is going to be amazing. So she's going to tell you exactly who she is and what it is that she does. Take it away. Hi, my name is Brian Dahl Wood. I'm an actress, a writer, producer, and now an editor. And um, yeah, so I have this new show that I've made and it's called Celebrities. Mm. It's a comedy to make people laugh. And um, the I just finished cutting the trailer. So it's on IMDb right now. And my goal is to finish editing the pilot by August. And um, yeah, and then hopefully it gets picked up into a TV series. That is so exciting. Oh my God. So tell us a little bit about um, why you decided to do this show. I mean, what was the, the creation mm-hmm. behind it? So um, it's kind of a long story, but I'm going to make it short. About, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Okay. So um, I'd say around 2004, I was writing and I had a play and I uh, got that produced and what I had done was I just started telling the universe like anybody who would listen I'd say yeah I'm producing a play I had no idea how I was going to do it I didn't have any money but I would just keep saying it and saying it and then one day I ran into a woman I never met before and I was telling her about it and she suggested that she'd help produce and kick money in. And I said, well, I'll give you a lead role in it because she was an actress. And then after that, maybe a few years later, I decided, you know what, maybe what I can do since I can write, but I don't have money, <laughs> I can find another actress who is either has money or is willing to help me produce and we can make a web series and I'll write her a starring role. So Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. So I went around saying that I was going to do this and, you know, at first nobody was really into it. And then one day I was at a party and there was a woman and she was like, oh yeah, I'll do it. So we started producing it together and I started writing and what came out was this comedy about actors in New York city. So it was kind of self-reflective, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it didn't work out with her producing. So I found myself in a position where I was like, oh my God, I can't do this by myself. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to go with the hand of God because I've been in this situation before where um, everything fell apart. So yes. I don't have to worry about that. I've done it already. And, you know, if it happens, it happens. <laughs> And would you believe it, Tammy, I just kept going and going with no money. I had no clue how this was going to happen, but I would just like meet with, you know, young people who wanted to do crew. And I, we had gotten a um, SAG after, you know, the union, um, a new media contract where we could defer pay, which means, you know, if it makes money, you get paid. And if it doesn't, like, you know, we're all working sweat equity. So I got a crew um, and I got a director and I got all the locations and just nice people who were like, yeah, you could film here. And somehow it was all coming together. And I thought to myself, you know what, chances that is actually going to get filmed? Probably not, you know. But I'll just keep going. And would you know it, not only did we get it all filmed, but like there were all these crazy miracles. Like I decided I needed a TV studio. Well, what was going to be the TV studio, right? And then one of the extras is like, oh, I know a guy who has a green room, a green screen room, you know, (laughs) for studio and yeah and and we walk in there you know in between filming and the new extra who I'd never met before by the way his name is James Farley he just hands the guy 200 bucks and he's like 
you've got yourself a studio. So we actually wrapped a week early. It was just like all these miracles were happening. And it really was just from me letting go and letting God, like they say, I was just like, who knows, you know, I'm just gonna ride this until it crashes. And you know what? It worked, we finished. But I lost some footage, I had no editor. And I kept having friends and people edit every once in a while. And then, you know, understandably, their life would take over and it never got done. And then in ironically in 2019, so this is now a year before COVID lockdown, Yes. I said, you know, I want to do a web series, but I don't really want to leave my house. So I started yes. doing one on Zoom and just inviting friend actors to meet me on Zoom from their homes. And we made this whole web series. It's on Facebook. It's called 365 <laughs> to Live. And then I, thanks, thanks. And so I started editing it myself. And then one day my husband said to me, you know, you can edit yourself now. You should take celebrities, you know, from 11 years ago and you should edit it and that's what I've been doing this the year isn't that awesome I don't you love it when your um spouse or what am I calling people significant others yeah. you know can actually see the vision and actually help you with it is that not amazing 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 but that vision is like I mean I'm on why I got goosebumps just listening <laughs> I was actually giggling and I didn't want you to think I was laughing at you. No, you know? no, no, not at all. I get you. I get you. <laughs> it was just amazing just to hear all the miracles. And this is like, that warms my heart because I love to see it. And people need to hear it. That just when you have that vision and you have a dream, something in your heart that you want to do, regardless, you just start moving, you know, and then things start happening. You know, miracles start happening. You know, the hand of God is on it and it just starts showing up. And it's like amazing. Oh my God, I love it. Tell us more. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And first, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your show. And when I saw what your theme was about, I thought, wow, this is so great because I I want to make my dreams come true. I want other people to, and like you just said, just keep moving. So many times we get caught up in, well, maybe I can't do it, or maybe I'm too old to do it, or maybe I'm too this to do it, or I'm yes. not enough of this. And then we just don't do it when if you did it, you know what, what happens if you did it and it didn't work out? Well, at least you tried, you know, and you, you never knew. know. Yes. Right, right. And you always get somewhere, you know, you never go back to square one because now you're a new you're a new being because you had that experience, you know, you know how many times successful people have failed, you yes. know, but the only reason they're the successful is ones, right? say it I again. Was, I said, I look at the older ones, like, you know, like Louise Hay, she didn't even, you know, do her book until what, 55. Yeah. You know, yep. and then I look at, and okay, so I'm on the fitness thing right now. You know, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm, I'm doing because I got to do it. Yeah. And so I look at the older ladies, like the 80 year old, that 85 year old woman that's got the, you know, built cut body and she's doing the, the competitions. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen her. She yeah. didn't start till she was in her 50s. Right. So I'm right. like, so I look at that and I'm like, because I'm in my 50s. <laughs> and so I look Me too. at the fact that, you know, I was like, I feel like this is like, I told my husband, I said, sometimes I feel myself going, okay, I got to do this. I got to get this done. I can get this done. I can get this done. And I, I'm in that hustle place, which I don't mm -hmm. like, and it mm -hmm. doesn't even work for me anyway, because I'm a reflector. So it just not, it doesn't even work. And mm -hmm. so, but I find myself there because I say, oh God, I got more years, you know, behind me than in front of me. Yes. You know? And yeah. so, and then I say, but then I say stuff like this, I want to live to be at least a hundred, you know, in my right mind, doing my thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And it, yeah. yeah right? mm -hmm. But when you get there, it's like, okay. And then when you sit back and you say, okay, no, 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 no. I'm not going to embrace that. I'm going to embrace the divine feminine. I'm going to embrace all of the divinity that is within me mm -hmm. that has shown me and given me this gift and this particular dream and vision and, and thing in my heart. You know, I'm going to embrace that. You know, mm -hmm. and then as you do that, things just line up. I'm just listening to your story is so amazing. Thanks. The thing is, is people allow money to stop them all the time. 
mm-hmm. you know, and they got with those dreams, you know, and it's like, no, no, yeah. because people started, many people started without a dime, just with mm-hmm. a dream and a vision, just like you said, right? And you see, everything starts lining up. It's like everything gets into alignment. And that is like, that's the magic. That's yeah. the magic. You know, and so anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when you were saying about like looking at like how much that you have more years behind you, but you know, let's let's say you go from fifty to ninety, right? That's another forty years. Right. 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 And yeah. let's say like somebody, you know, let's say somebody, you know, God forbid, but they like pass away at like in their seventies. From fifties to seventies, it's still twenty years is a long time. Like yeah. what you know, what are you gonna do with it? Go, oh, it's practically over. <laughs> like, no, but it's well, you, not. You know, people do. People do. Yes. They, yeah. But that's that's one of the reasons why I like working with women over 40. Because that that's the time when people start saying, Oh, you know, I'm 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 old, you know. <laughs> I hear it yeah. all the time and I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. You're yeah and you know, I think, old. I think Tammy, I think a lot of it has to do with our society, you yeah, know, yeah. especially, especially for older women, yes. you know, in, in every field, you know, it's like, oh, you're done, you know, and I think we're finally gotten to a better age where, you know, even with the acting, you know, where it's like, oh, forget it. If you're not young, um, right. that people are starting to appreciate older women. The wisdom. Um, yeah. And the beauty that we, that we carry because of so many times, because of all the things that we have endured in life, you know, right. like, cause you, cause you look at Betty White, she was still acting until she left here. Right. Oh <laughs> yeah. I love her. <laughs> yes. You know, but it's like, and you, and I mean, so many of them, because I'm trying to think she was still acting. Cicely Tyson was still acting right before she died. Yeah. So it was like, you know, they were 90s, 100, whatever, you know, it's like, wow, you know, they can still. Louise Hay. Ago, mm-hmm. They would make young people up to look old. Remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Cicely Tyson, right? Yeah. They made her up to look up, right? And uh, Jane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in Jane Pippen when she was yeah, young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing but you but that's what they did you know Hollywood would do that they would make young people up to look old so what what about the older women (laughs) that could be right right totally it's like you said it's almost like now they're opening up and they're looking at older women and saying okay yeah you know older women you know still beautiful yeah yeah and guys you know with way more wisdom than some of the young ones you know and, and it's like yeah let's let's take advantage of that Right. Right. And, you know, despite what anybody says, you just got to keep believing in yourself and do it anyway. You just do it anyway, because, yeah, anybody else's definition is not who you are. And, you know, one thing I've learned is you've got to take yourself very, very seriously because nobody else will. And, And when somebody doesn't take you seriously, if you just keep taking yourself seriously, eventually you're going to, what's the word I want to use? Like a magnet, you know, attract right. people who support that. Yes. Yes. And that, that is so real because mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it, it's so, it can be unnerving when you are the only one that believes in your vision, right? Yeah, totally. So you, you know, and there. I think that's the part I was speaking with a friend yesterday and we were talking about consistency because she just started a TikTok and she wants to do, she does, she likes to do like investigation and stuff, you know, like the ID things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so she was doing that for one of her cousins or something. And I said, girl, I said, you could do that. I said, right there on YouTube and TikTok and whatever. I said, people would love that kind of crap. You know, I said, Mm -hmm. she was like, yeah, I'm really good at investigating. I thought about getting my private investigator and she's Mm -hmm. young, you know, so. Um, I don't know. I laugh. My husband and I always collect children <laughs> that don't belong. That's where we, where we move. Oh yeah. So these kids are like, they're like our kids age, like in their thirties. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about this and, you know, and so she'd bounce some things off and I said, yeah, you know, you'd be good at that, you know? And so she's like, yeah, she said, but my problem is consistency. I said, okay, I can help you with that. <laughs> I said, I said, I can, you know, call you and be, you know, help you be accountable to do your videos and this and that. Cause I told her, I said, that would be good. You know, that would be like, that's an excellent way. You know, I said, cause people are making all kinds of money online. 
you yeah. know, and she's got a couple kids. I was like, you don't got to go out and, you know, be working all the time out there. I said, you can be doing it in the house. Mm-hmm. She was like, girl, I, she was like, my husband told me to talk to you. I was like, <laughs> and I told her, I said, and that one was free. <laughs> but I think it's such an amazing thing um, about your show. So are you said it's running on IMDb now? The trailer is. The trailer, okay. The trailer for it. Um, and then I'm, my goal is to finish editing it and to release it in August. So what's the, what's the process of that like? Oh, it's really interesting. Well, you know, this year, because, you know, I took a project and footage from 11 years ago. Um, so first of all, what's the, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, my my husband found um, it's called Da Vinci Resolve, and it's an editing system that anybody can use. It's free. They have an advanced one for like three hundred dollars, but I've been doing the whole thing for free, um, and it's it's really nice because a lot of you know, it it's what um, yeah. There's a learning curve, okay. but then once once you start, and there are a lot of YouTubers who teach you how to do it. So when I run into a problem, <laughs> you, find, you go to YouTube University. <laughs> absolutely. Um, big shout out to Jason Yadl- Yadlovsky. He, check out his videos. Anybody out there who wants to edit with Da Vinci, he's awesome. Really, really helpful. Um, speaking of taking myself seriously, um, I play three characters in this comedy and I'm going to introduce you to two of them right now. Hang on. I was going to (laughs) ask, but I was waiting. (laughs) Oh, shucks. All right. Hey, how you doing today? All right. How you doing? Hey, I'm Dolores. Oh, Dolores. Okay, nice to meet you. This is a cool show you got here. Yeah, yeah. So what, what you doing with yourself? Oh, you know, a little of this, a little of that. Mm-hmm. You know, from? I'm Did a mover know? and a shaker, you know, you know how it is. I'm mm-hmm. from New York City. New York, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Georgia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Georgia. I've heard of that place. Yeah. Mm. Peaches down there. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm going to let Brian will come back, but it nice to see you, cutie. Yeah, yeah. Same. Don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. She was like, uh, I was going to say the quintessential, maybe Italian uh, mob wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I love movies too. I do. I, I, I love them and they give me such inspiration, you know? Yeah. I, laugh, I tell people, I said, I get the most inspiration from movies and music. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited about your show. I cannot wait. Oh, Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. (laughs) Yeah, because I'm thinking like you got that character and then two more. Yeah, it's going to be good. Going to be amazing. So what is next for you? Oh, good question. Well, um, I've got some other things I've been working on. Um, Also for over 10 years off and on. Um, I've been working on something that I thought was going to be a movie, but I really feel like it's more of a a TV series now. Um, Mm -hmm. Back when I started, it's historical. It's based on history. And back then, nobody was really doing anything with history. But then they had the movie Lincoln. You know, I think Steven Spielberg came out with that. Yeah. And that was around the time I was thinking, wow, maybe someone would actually like this. But I have so much material and I'm in love with all the material. Um, 
not not just like I'm not saying I'm in love with my writing. I mean that it's it's real historic documents that I'm using for the oh, material nice. and the characters. And it's based on the beginning of the anti-slavery movement in the United States in the 1830s. So, you know, as we know, um, the, the slaves were freed in the mid 1860s, um, but the slavery movement really started, I mean, I'm sure it started before that a little bit here and there, you know, maybe even 1815, 1825, here and there. But in the 1830s, it really started snowballing. And by 1839, it was kind of like, you know, in 2016, when, you know, the election with um, yeah. mm -hmm. Right. And how like nine out of 10 people were talking about the presidential election here, you know, so in 1839, nine out of 10 people were talking about slavery. Mm -hmm. um, but it was because it came up because most people didn't care, you know, most white people didn't care. Um, it had nothing to do with them. And then what happened was um, there there were senators and congressmen who were fighting in Congress to end slavery. Um, and finally, some people in Congress put down a rule saying no one's allowed to talk about it anymore. And wow. um, yeah, so there were there were people, you know, citizens who were sending in petitions and they were being told, nope, nobody can talk about it. Like we're not looking at your petitions. Um, and so when they found out that, you know, people who didn't care about the petitions, who didn't care about slavery, found out that their right to petition was now being challenged, and that's their freedom right, then they started, you know, so, so it started that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started that way. And then, you know, but but the people who were really against slavery and who were really fighting against that, they started like that was there, you know, it kind of like a crowbar. It just kind of opened that door for them with yeah. the rest of the, the people, at least in the north. And so they started traveling around giving talks wherever they could in churches or in barns or whatever, and started mm. changing people's minds about it. And and so I just find the whole process so important because um there's this whole divide, you know, like the white people and the black people. And I I think, first of all, the whole thing's, you know, stupid, obviously. Everyone knows Why? it's stupid, Why? you know, um, that it's like an understatement to say that. But um, because if you think about it, if you do your DNA, mm -hmm. I did mine. Yeah. Um, all kinds of people are in me. Right. Right. <laughs> you no. Know, and it's like that for all of us. Right. You know, what I mean? it's like you might not even know, but, you know, you have so much. Middle Eastern, you know, blood or whatever in you. Yeah. You know, and people, people love to hate them. Right. Know, but it's like, why? You know, yeah. and it, it's amazing how it, it, it wasn't like that prior to like the 1500s. Right. It wasn't like that. People were people and that, you know, everybody yeah. was everybody. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, you got some people that decided that, you know, oh, I need to be superior. And then I need to use, mm -hmm. you know, religion to help that. Right, right, so, right. Yeah, yeah, so I think this is going to be amazing. Thanks. I, I totally agree. And, you know, I started back in, I want to say around 1998. Um, mm -hmm. I started writing stories that included Black people and it included um, LGBTQ people. And the stories have nothing to do with being Black and they have nothing to do with being LGBTQ. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened. Tongue twister all of a sudden, but um, I think it's just my nerves. But um, yeah, but it was like I think it was when I was a kid. And um, do you remember that movie Action Jackson? Yes. Um, I'm trying to remember who starred in it. Um, the one that was in Rocky. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right. Um, Carl Weathers. Carl, Carl Weathers, thanks. And when I saw that, I was like, this is the first movie I'm seeing starring a Black person that's not about being Black. Like, he just gets to star in a movie. And, um, and of course, you know, yeah, yeah. And, you know, of course, movies about, you know, what it means to be Black, what it means to be Jewish, what it means to be gay, like all of those are important, of course, of course. but I just think it's such a shame that like people don't get cast in something that isn't about that unless they're white, you know, and, and I don't mean just Black people, like I have a friend who's no, Asian and, you know, she gets turned okay. down for roles all the time and they go to white women and, you know, because money you know it brings in money or you know whatever and it's just so so that's something that typically whatever it is like like if they're middle east and they want them to dump it, and if right. they're asian right. they want, you know it's crazy right. and it's like no, yeah you know they're right there, you know or whatever you know but yeah yeah that you're right about that and yeah yeah it's like come on now you know everybody like i mm-hmm. i heard somebody talking about it was a post that somebody put out about um, Denzel and Macbeth. Okay. Well, why did they have him play Macbeth? I was like, because Macbeth was black anyway. <laughs> right. You read the story. Right, right. I was like, that was kind of perfect, really. And he did a <laughs> damn good job. Everybody right. And that movie was good. Oh my gosh. I haven't hilarious. seen it yet. And people jumped all over that person on, <laughs> on that thread. I just read through and they were like, what is wrong with you? Have you even read it? Have you, did you study Shakespeare at all? Did you go to school? Right, right. You know, these are of, things that people say. And yeah. It's crazy. It's like, come on now. What difference does it make? Right, right. You know, let the best actor win. Not, you know, not, not the white one. <laughs> you know, so let right. the best actor win. You yeah. I mean? and let's, let's do it. Let's film like that. And that is like excellent and exciting. I'm so excited I, about this project that you're doing. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited I'm about it too. Yeah. Yeah. So what does your husband think about it? So he's just really supportive, you know? Um, yeah. He, he's, he's just a really great person and my best friend. And uh, I was engaged a few times to a few other people <laughs> before and, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm just so glad that I, I held out because, um, yeah, he's just a really supportive person. And we're both very similar. We both spend all day working on our creative projects. And I think, I think if I were married to somebody else, I would drive anybody else crazy because they'd be like, don't you want to go out? Don't you want to go get drinks? Don't you want to go to a restaurant? Don't you want to like have friends, you know? And you know, and the two of us are just like, we both spend all day working on a creative projects and then we meet for lunch and hang out and watch, you know, a sitcom or, or a TV show that we like. And, and then we meet again for dinner and then we go to sleep and talk about our day. And we're just like really happy. Like we just like working on our projects. I know it sounds like we're the biggest nerds and we probably are, but. No, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm telling you, I. <laughs> my husband and I we just took a that long trip across the country and went to Mississippi oh beautiful and, uh, yeah and people were like "Ooh, that's a long drive because we, we live in Washington state so we were like um well yeah but it was good because we were together and so his brother says man don't you know that you can't be in a car with a woman over five hours and y'all <laughs> argue <laughs> and my husband was like Clearly, you've never been in love. <laughs> oh, good, good comeback. Very we're good like, comeback. No, you know, we we had a great time because we were together almost two weeks. You know, we drove down there and then we stayed a few days. You know, did the wake funeral, all that stuff, and, and then drove back and we drove the long way. Oh, know? that's right, that's right. I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you were like, "Are you think you're gonna be back?" I'm like, "Yeah, we'll be back." Right, <laughs> right. <gonna> <laughs> but it was amazing, you know. And and I think about that because we we're the same way. Way. people are like we all aren't gonna go I'm like nah, we're not gonna no we're good <laughs> now he, he's not working on creative stuff but I'm like up here in my office and he'll be some days he's like if he's off he's like um so you know you've been up there 10 hours <laughs> wow wow <laughs> like, no, I didn't realize that 
<laughs> I'm having a good time doing what I do. And, and it's amazing. Yeah. I love to hear that, you know, when people yeah. are so sympathetical like that, you know, and, and oh, I, yeah. I, I actually did bite the bullet and was married to somebody else for 20 years. Oh, well, I had a first marriage too. Yeah. And I've, I've been a kid. Um, but after that, I got engaged a couple of times and it didn't, and One didn't time, go through. And yeah. He was a jerk. So I was so glad I didn't do that one. I had a few that asked and I was like, mm -mm, I ain't ready, you know, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but that is jealous is like so amazing. I am well, so excited about this conversation that we have had. Thanks. It's me really too. So well, share. Oh, I was, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt no, I was gonna you. Tell you share. Go ahead and share. Oh, I was, okay. No, I was going to give a shout out to my husband. Um, yes, do that. Eric Shefferman, because um, he actually has worked on celebrities a lot for me when I've needed help. He's helped with the colorizing of it and he's done some visual effects for it. And he took photos of the actors because we have some new footage, some new nice. footage from this year. Yeah, yeah. That is so nice. I'm so excited about that because the thing is, is too, as long as you have somebody with you that's supportive and it can help you, that is the thing. <laughs> my husband likes to make videos and stuff like that so sometimes he'll do like stories for me and things like that because he loves to do that I don't, I don't know just one day he started playing around with it mm -hmm. and then he would make these these little, little little movies and put the music on it and stuff and people started responding <laughs> so, oh that's great that was amazing so I'm like okay so I need you to make me some stories <laughs> also he does creative projects too yeah he'll be it was sitting doing that and i'm like oh, okay it's all good you know it works out because i was telling him he said somebody reached out to him and was asking him did he do that and he was like i really even know what to say <laughs> <laughs> i was like well instead of it's something you desire you know just jump on it or whatever but yeah yeah, yeah. totally I'm so excited okay so um share any last things you want to share with the people um, and then share um, how they can find you, how they can connect with you. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. Um, gee, I'm not sure I know what else to share. Um, what? Any insight for someone who is wanting to do what you, what you do? Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 I would say just do it. Don't think about it. And I think, a huge thing that I really learned is there are always going to be people out there who question you, who um, suggest that you can't do it for whatever reason in whatever way they say it. I have learned that the most successful people almost never do that. It's the people who aren't successful at it. It's usually the people who aren't even in the industry who do that. And that if you try to respond to them in a way to argue or to get them to approve by telling them about your little achievements, and when I say little, I mean like as you're going, the small yeah, ones, yeah. you know, um, all it's going to do is suck you back down because they're not going to say anything that's going to be helpful. It'll just be something like a question where the answer is going to have to be no, you know, like, are you getting paid? So instead of looking at what you achieved, you're going to have to say no, and that's going to feel right. bad. No. <laughs> right, right. So the best thing you can do is not talk to them about it. And if they bring it up, change the subject, say something like, oh, I love your earrings, or just ask them a question about themselves, and they will just get sucked back into that um but surround yourself with supportive people and it's usually people in the industry who are either trying to do what you're doing also or have done it and then just do it don't don't overthink it you might as well do it and you never know where that could lead yes yes that is perfect do it and that's <laughs> that's what i say too i say you know what you got to do like nike just do like it. nike right <laughs> exactly Yep. I was like, you know, because the thing is, is if you tell too many people and people, you know, and what I find too, is people are so jealous. I'm like, if you want to do it, then you do it. Mm -hmm. you no, know, but fucking leave me alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. And that's, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, you want to do it, do it, you know, but don't mm -hmm. be raining on my parade. Because right. you, 
you know, because you don't feel like you can do whatever it is that you decide. Right? right, exactly, exactly. And, you know, think about when you were, you know, three years old or five years old and you said, I'm going to draw a castle. You know, you never thought, well, like, can I do it? I'm not really as good as, no, you know, you Rembrandt or, yeah, you just, you just do it. You know, that's the, the best advice is to just do it and just, just turn your brain off. <laughs> yes. I was going to say that trust factor is huge. I mean, in, in yourself. Yeah. You know, it's like, just trust. Right. So on that, we're going to end this. I am super excited that. Brandell has decided to join me. It's been an amazing conversation. I hope that you got so much out of it, like I did. <laughs> and I know I say this every single interview that I do, but it's so amazing. And it's been such a beautiful time together. And I just, I love it. And I'm so excited. And just thinking of what she has created and what she is creating, it just makes me like, get inside because I love to see how people just transform you know their whole life because you know truth be told anytime you are creating something and you put something out into the world and it catches on it changes your whole life mm -hmm. so absolutely process right yep absolutely and if you want to see the trailer you can go to imdb.com and type in celebrities web no nope, celebrities tv series okay all right definitely we'll do that and definitely make sure that you check that out and that you follow brando because i'm super excited she does some other stuff too and so we'll probably do another time and talk about that sure i'd be excited. very happy to. <laughs> and i definitely want to invite you to my group too um so you can come and you know do a thing in there so again, oh. thank you so much for hanging out with us it has been fabulous and amazing um, time and I hope that you all got so much out of it and I'm sending you so much love and appreciation so thank you for joining us bye now I know you've been blown away with the amazing valley here today now go out and inspire the planet and be sure to send us a message when you're ready to come talk about it on straight out of savannah talking with Tammy